Have you ever wished that you had a clearer mind? I recall over years after fighting cancer, how I wished and prayed that my mind would just be clearer. I've learned so many things in the last couple of years, and I've found things coming clearer, remembering things better, understanding things better, um, uh, concentrating better. And uh, I've, I've seen over these years in study, there's a great relation between how we live and how bright our minds would be. Your brain has been called the most complex object in the universe. Every day there's new research. Every day there's new things that's been found about the brain. The brain is really a marvelous organ. Did you know that uh, the neurons produce brief little spikes of voltage in their outer membranes? Our brains is really a live organ. Did you know that while awake, your brain generates between 10 and 23 watts of power? That is enough to power up a bulb. Our brains are really marvelously made. Why be average if you have the potential to be at the top, to be the best? I always say to the students where we present this at universities, you could be in the top 10% by little choices. And this is what this little introduction to the Brain Power series is about. We are going to talk about the mind in the series. The mind um, where all the cognitive thinking happens. This is um, your frontal lobe, and uh, there's 13 hits that we could identify that really compromises the frontal lobe. If we would avoid this, our brain would just be much sharper and much brighter. The frontal lobe is uh, really the first place that is compromised by many of the ways that we eat and the ways that we live, our lifestyles. We could make a big difference. I want to remind you that the crown of the brain is where the frontal lobe is. This is where our spirituality is seated. This is where our morality, our willpower, our motivation, our reasoning, our judgment is seated. When you look at these things, this is really where the society is lacking. It does say something of how we look at our, our, our frontal lobes. Our frontal lobes is, is the place where our intelligence is seated. It is the place where decision-making takes place. This is also the place where self-awareness is seated, trustworthiness, reliability. These are really characteristics that, that are really thinning out in our societies. And we might just see in this series how this all connects up with uh, the time we live in, the way we live, and yeah, the bright minds that we don't have. We also go into the power supply. And uh, we find that uh, there is five basic steps to, um, to optimize your brain function. I don't know if you have uh, thought about this, but your brain is a very complex computer. It is like a, a computer having a power supply. Your computer needs uninterrupted power supply, your brain needs uninterrupted power supply. It is so important to realize that uh, you could have an uninterrupted power supply by just the way that you make decisions in regards to your diet. When you have a stable blood sugar level, it means that your power supply to your brain would be optimal. I want to remind you that 25% of the glucose that your body needs goes to the brain. 25% of the oxygen that you breathe in is really needed at the brain. And it's these um, two very important components combining that gives us the energy that really gives that 23 watts of power to, to uh, uh, brighten up that bulb up here. And that is really what we need. Our brain uses only carbohydrates. And uh, therefore, we need to look at our diet so that these components are there and our brains can work 
uh, at a better rate. And then we're going to look at, in this series, shaping your thoughts. In this specific segment, we're looking at a very important little recipe to hire your intelligence. We don't realize this, but 60% of the solids of our brain consists of fats. And it's very important that we have the right fats in our diet to make this brain uh, work uh, better. Shaping your thoughts is about these omegas that really make you work faster, think better, and working more optimally. In this series, we're going to look at the neurophysiology of the brain. Now, I'm not a specialist in physiology, um, but uh, I know the one that has created us. And uh, I'm so grateful for a lot of research that really makes this subject very um, understandable. And in a layman's language, I would love to share with you what really goes on in the cells. Now we look at the brain as just an organ out there. But there's some profound things that happen right there in that little cells. And there is really millions of them working all the time, very active. And then we need to know that uh, habits and addictions, even in regards to appetite, really has a profound effect on our brains. Your eating habits does affect your performance. Not only your energy levels, but the way you think. The shopper your mind is, is really very closely related to what you would eat. Sometimes we eat because our appetite dictates that we do this or we do that. And it's not really good for our brains. We need an uninterrupted supply of, uh, of, of energy to our brain. What we don't realize is that appetite is really forming the way we live because we don't eat because it's good for us or the food is good because we love the taste. And it many times does have no good effect on our brain. And then um, I need to remind you that we're going to really go into that little cells. We're going to go and see where these little synapses takes place, um, where this transmission, where these little sparks of information uh, crosses the barrier, the little synapse gaps. And uh, by the way you live, could change these neurotransmitters. It could change your behavior. It changes who you are. It changes how you, you feel about life, how you talk about life, how you think about life. These can all profoundly change who you are. And in this series, we go in and look at these details. Habits and addictions, when it comes to sex, has also a very, very important effect on our mental performance. How I regard my sexual life could affect how I think. And we need to look at this very carefully. This is one of the reasons why we have such a great moral issue in our society. Our frontal lobes are compromised. We, um, we live by feeling rather than principles. And this leads us to, uh, to not use our brain to the, to the capacity it can. It means a compromised thinking process. And then one of my most exciting um, subjects and sessions is experiencing the power of freedom. You know, we can set ourselves up for success. We can decide where we want to be. Many a times we... Um, we, you know, we, we go with the flow and we decide that it's just the fate that it would land here or there. You could set yourself up for success. We're going to look at some profound examples in this session of how you can set yourself up for success. You can decide if you really want to be an eagle or do you want to be a chicken. And uh, you make a decision. Life is about decisions. I love the little testimonies that I've received over the years uh, giving this seminar at different venues. Most of the universities in the Cape area 
have uh, experienced some profound changes by applying the principles learned in the Brain Power series. And uh, uh, here is one man that uh, really stood in front and uh, told people about uh, what uh, he has experienced in the Brain Power series. We go to little towns like Craddock, um, and you can see audiences there where people are touched, changing their lives, and uh, having that capacity of, of uh, brain power that they never thought they would have. This is the Nelson Mandela Metropole University, and you can see a great, beautiful audience. I love working with young people. I normally challenge them, and I see profound effects. Um, I always say to them, you would want to come and kiss me uh, for sharing this information, especially if you get your marks after the exam times. And um, I many times get these little letters saying, where are you? I want to come and kiss you. This is one young man that uh, received a, uh, a reward for answering a question. What I asked him is, after the first session, I asked him, please give me the 13 frontal lobe hits that would compromise your brain. And uh, this young man could mention all 13 of them in sequence. Uh, I love it when I would stop them and say, you know, at nine I would say, yeah, what is number 13? <laughs> uh, give me number 12. Here is one of those men that said uh, every frontal lobe hit as it was in sequence and um, this by one session and applying those principles. Some profound outcomes. I got a letter from a young student uh, attending the, the uh, Fort Hare University at um, Alice. And uh, three weeks before the exam time, uh, we gave the seminar over a weekend. There was about 800 students. And um, eight... 100 students, three weeks before exam. I want you to just think about this. And I challenged them. I said, guys, follow these principles. I know you're shaken up. The exams are here. Too little time, too much to do. But I know you're going to be rewarded. You're going to want to come and kiss me. And I got this little letter. And this young man says, I've, I've never had much distinctions. I barely pass subjects. But Wow. Only in three weeks of doing God's will, three weeks, and this is the results that I had. And I saw something very profound. Um, here is one subject. He got a term mark of 66 and an exam mark of 50, 51. That's not so good. That was his weakest subject. Um, but then it goes on. 74 as a term mark, exam 72. And here comes the profound differences now. Term mark, 89. Exam mark, 75. Term mark, 87. Exam mark, 84. Wow, look at this. 72 for a, for a term mark. Exam mark, 81. Distinction. Term mark, 78. Exam mark, 80. Something profound that he picked up. That for the first time, he did much better with his exam than he had for a term mark. This only three weeks before the exam. Can I kiss you now was the end of his letter. Many of them really touched. Here's another young man, Sepang Majara. I met him a couple of months after we presented the Brain Power series. And uh, uh, he came to me where I was talking at an ASI rally. And uh, he came to me and he hugged me. Um, you know, there was 800 students. I couldn't remember this young man. I remembered his face, but I couldn't remember his name. And he introduced himself and he said, you know what? You've made a big difference in my life. Um, you've really motivated me. And I said, tell me about it. And he tells me that um, he uh, graduated cum laude. And uh, because of some um, academic um, uh, results, he uh, qualified for the Mal Nelson Mandela Foundation um, and was elected as a, as a special official in this foundation. He is busy with great projects at the moment. And you know, really what inspires me is his, his beautiful smile. I know that you could be 
in that top 10% as Sepang, if you would just make good choices around your health and um, around how you look at your brain. I got very recently, I got this little SMS. And um, this was a young man that uh, attended one of my brain power series in the, in the southern peninsula. And um, he came to me and he said, I need an appointment with you. I want to speak to you personally. And he was a very distraught man. He told me about um, the fact that he needs to write exams. He's, he cannot write those exams. He's done so badly. He's failed basically all his subjects. There's a lot of expectation from his family. There's a lot of expectation from, from uh, colleagues and students. There's a lot of expectations from his lecturers. Um, he doesn't know how he's going to do it. This is the reason why he came to the Brain Power series, to, to, to hear how he can improve his brain power. And, and if there's any way that I can help make a miracle for him, then you know, what, what should he do? And I reminded him, if he would just follow those principles that, uh, that we taught him over the six nights and apply them, uh, then, then there might be a difference. Um, I prayed with him because I believe that God is the one that really puts us all together for us. He's the one that created us. He's created the, the mind. He, he knows how it works. And so I could just lay him before God's throne and ask, Lord, please just work with this young man. And uh, he started following these principles, and I got this very, very uh, motivational little e, uh, SMS um, a few days back that says, Pastor Arnold, I'm the student who had the problem with the brain and some other things. I truly have seen a change. I hit more than 60% in all my tests. I want to remind you, he failed. There was no way he's going to pass these exams. And now he says to me, I've hit more than 60%. Well, that's not 80, that's not 90, that's not a distinction, but that's a pass. And I really praise God for what he's done for him. I truly thank you. I bless the Lord for you. And uh, he, he, he signs off with his name. You could make a big difference in your brain capacity and the way you live, the abundance of life. You see, you could increase your intelligence by at least 25 IQ points by just following the principles. Now, this is not something I'm thumb-sucking. This is something that I've got really scientific proof for. This is something that we've seen with small children. We present the program Power, uh, Brain Power for Kids, and we've seen little kids really excelling. We've seen students excelling. We've seen all the people excelling, really picking up their uh, mental cap uh, capacity. The question is, do you want to be more intelligent? If that's so, this is the series that you would not miss. Do you want to have the power to follow your conscience? This is really a profound thing because, you know, that really makes you you, you are. Um, do you want to know the will of God? I really want to know the will of God for my life. If you really want to know the will of God, this is the series you really need to look at. If you want to be more spiritual, and I don't know about you guys, we are really living at the end of time. Time is running out. We need that connection with God. Times are getting tough. It's really a benefit to live with God and for God. And you could spiritually benefit by just using this information and living it out. Do you want to be fitter? Do you want to be healthier? You know what? I know what it is to be sick. Fighting cancer for, uh, for a year or two, uh, being in remission for quite a while now, I thank the Lord every day for another day. Uh, being healthy, being fit, it's really such a great benefit. I thank God for giving that to me. You could make this something for yourself. If you would just phone us at 21 you could order the set of DVDs and you could find a profound, profound change in your own life. You could see yourself more intelligent. You could be an eagle rather than a chicken scratching in the dust. You could also contact us on our email address at info at befree.co.za. Please look at our website. It is www.befree.co.za. 
this is the chance of a life. You could find yourself, not the average, but you could yourself find yourself there on top by a small decision like this. May God give you the courage to make some changes, some positive changes that would have a profound effect for your life, not only for now, but for the life to come. May God bless you all, is my prayer. Let's pray together. Gracious Father, we give you all the glory and the honor for making us so wonderfully. Thank you for creating us with a brain so powerful. Thank you that millions of neurons is activated at the same time, making us do whatever we do and do it well. God, we know that you don't make things halfway. You make it positive. You've made us so positive. Thank you for that. Thank you for granting us the opportunity to live abundant lives. We want to pray now, Lord, and ask that you would give us wisdom. Give us the motivation to live principled lives. Help us, Lord, to just grow in our spiritual experience with you. And thank you for answering our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.